visiting a zoo and getting up close with a tiger might not be high on everyone's list of priorities, given the inherent risks associated with these majestic yet unpredictable animals, tigers, known for their solitary nature, often do not interact peacefully with other creatures, including humans. This potential danger was vividly brought to life for one woman during what began as an enjoyable day at the zoo. Tigers are characterized by their strong, muscular bodies. Capable of chasing down prey with remarkable speed, their large heads and powerful jaws classify them as formidable predators in the wild. As the largest members of the cat family, some tiger species can reach lengths of up to 11 feet. This makes the thought of encountering one, especially a hungry one, rather intimidating. Across the world, various tiger subspecies roam, including the Bengal, Indochinese, Malayan, Siberian, South China, and Sumatran tigers, on one particular afternoon. Brittany Osborne and her cousin Natasha decided to attend a special event at the Potawatomi Zoo called Wine on the Wild Side. This event offered Brittany a unique chance to meet a magnificent tiger up close, an experience that would prove to be both awe-inspiring and thought-provoking. Tigers are a major attraction at zoos for their beauty and power. The Potawatomi Zoo showcased one of the most remarkable tigers, captivating visitors with its presence. While it is generally neither safe nor advisable to approach these predators, the safety of a secure enclosure allowed Brittany and other visitors to observe the tiger without risk of harm. Brittany, being 27 weeks pregnant, was particularly cautious, her protective instincts heightened for the safety of her unborn child. A fascinating fact about tigers is that a group of them is called an ambush, a name that reflects their strategic hunting prowess, despite their reputation as fierce hunters. Tigers are also incredibly nurturing mothers, they typically keep their cubs close for about two years, a longer period than most wild animals, before they separate. It's a distressing yet crucial reality that more tigers are currently held as pets than exist in the wild, a situation many conservationists hope will reverse in the future. During her visit, Brittany found the day to be delightful overall, with the highlight being her encounter at the tiger enclosure. Protected by a thick glass wall, she was able to safely observe the raw power of a tiger, capable of sprinting up to 40 miles per hour and leaping over 5 meters when necessary. The tiger's demeanor shifted as it approached. What might have seemed a hostile creature became less threatening and more curious. After a brief pause and a restful moment, the tiger suddenly dashed towards the glass, a startling yet spectacular display of its agility and strength. This encounter not only heightened the thrill of the day but also sparked a deeper reflection on the majestic creature's place both in captivity and the wild. In a remarkable incident at the zoo, a transparent barrier separated Brittany, a pregnant visitor, from a curious tiger. Unlike many zoo animals that typically ignore their human observers, this tiger showed a fascinating and unusual interest in Brittany. Initially, Brittany experienced a hint of nervousness. Wondering if the tiger might have aggressive intentions towards her, however, her concerns were soon put to rest as the tiger began to affectionately nuzzle against the glass. This endearing behavior provided the perfect opportunity for a memorable photo. Far from showing any signs of aggression, the tiger softly whined and gently pawed at the glass, as if trying to get closer to Brittany. One might wonder if the tiger saw Brittany as a potential meal or was it genuinely expressing affection. Regardless, Brittany's friends found the encounter both amusing and remarkable. Enjoying the tender display as the interaction unfolded, Brittany responded by standing up to better show her pregnant belly through the glass, captivating the tiger even further. Experts who later reviewed the footage speculated that the tiger might have been drawn by specific pheromones emitted during pregnancy. Given Brittany's advanced stage of pregnancy, these pheromones could have been especially strong. Eliciting a noticeable reaction from the tiger, in the wild, tigers typically avoid humans, and they are known to be responsible for more human fatalities through direct attacks than any other mammal. This is primarily due to their minimal day-to-day -day interaction with people. The bond between a mother tiger and her cub is deep and protective, a trait that discourages other wild animals from attacking a tiger cub. This peculiar and touching scene led some to ponder whether the tiger was forming a bond with Brittany's unborn child. A woman in the video expressed a mix of amusement and concern, comforted only by the sturdy glass that ensured their safety. In a world where online videos often depict terrifying tiger attacks, this gentle interaction offered a refreshingly tender view of the typically majestic and formidable tiger. Thankfully, this tiger displayed no signs of aggression, seeking only affection. 
and appeared to sense the presence of something special, turning this moment into a magical interaction between human and animal. What are your thoughts? Is the tiger simply curious about Brittany's belly, or could there be a deeper, perhaps more profound reason behind its behavior? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Your insights are valuable to us. Now, we have another engaging story. Let's proceed to the next one. Tigers are often perceived as formidable, menacing creatures, embodying a relentless spirit. However, the tiny cub that Edward Atwood stumbled upon in the depths of the forest presented a stark contrast, appearing vulnerable and helpless due to its severe injuries. Years later, Atwood was under the impression that the tiger had erased any memory of him, but their subsequent encounter would astonish him profoundly. Edward Atwood was a recluse living a solitary life in his remote village nestled in the mountains. He had no close family ties and had never had the financial resources to pursue a formal higher education. Despite this, he was a man of high intellect and a kind heart, always ready to face new challenges head-on. When the chance to become a forest ranger was offered to him, he seized it without a second thought. The position seemed tailor-made for him. He had spent his entire life in these mountains and knew the terrain like the back of his hand. Atwood's duties involved patrolling the forest every two days and relaying his findings back to his team of rangers. On one particularly frosty morning, during a routine patrol, Atwood encountered something that would forever change his life. The forest was enveloped in a thick layer of snow that morning, transforming the familiar landscape into a near-alien terrain. The heavy snowfall made navigation arduous, requiring him to frequently stop and catch his breath as he trudged through the deep snow in his mountain gear. During one of these pauses, faint whines reached his ears, he stopped to listen, trying to determine the origin of the sounds. Just as he was beginning to think he had imagined them, the whining ceased when he shifted slightly. As he was about to resume his walk, the whining resumed, this time. He was able to trace the sound to a bush right in front of him. Approaching cautiously, he discovered the source, a tiger cub's head peeking out from beneath the snow. The animal continued to whine and shook its head in an attempt to dislodge the clinging snow. Upon closer examination, Atwood noticed bloody bite marks and what appeared to be a broken leg on the cub. His instincts as a ranger kicked in, and he quickly scooped up the cub, cradling it close to his chest as he made his way back down the mountain to the safety of his village. Back at his home, Atwood crafted a makeshift bed for the cub using his old clothes and applied medicinal herbs to stop the bleeding. He then fashioned a splint from garden sticks to stabilize the cub's injured leg. Despite its discomfort, the cub allowed Atwood to treat its wounds, whining softly. As evening approached, Atwood's thoughts were solely on the well-being of the tiger cub. Suspecting it might be hungry, uncertain of the best food to provide, he contemplated his next steps in caring for the young animal. Then it dawned on Atwood that his dog had recently had puppies and was producing an ample supply of milk. With care, he collected the milk into a bowl and brought it to the frail tiger cub, hoping it would nourish the little creature and help it survive the night. Despite being weak and uncomfortable, the cub showed a flicker of interest in the milk, gently. Atwood brought the bowl to its mouth, and the cub started to slowly lap at the milk, its tongue cautiously tasting the unfamiliar nourishment. This small act of appetite was a hopeful sign to the ranger. Often, animals on the brink of death would refuse food, so this was a positive indication that the cub might have a fighting chance. Atwood committed himself to the cub's recovery, feeding it the dog's milk regularly, day by day. The cub started to regain strength and grow in size. Its wounds began to heal, leaving behind a long scar on its leg as a reminder of its fragile beginnings. Over time, the tiger, named Gore by Atwood, inadvertently became more like a pet than a wild animal. After six months, Gore had blossomed into a majestic and robust tiger, often accompanying Atwood on his patrols through the mountainous terrain. During these journeys, Atwood watched with delight as Gore frolicked in the grass, behaving more like a giant house cat than a fierce predator. Yet, Atwood noticed that Gore didn't display typical wild tiger behaviors, facing the hard truth that Gore needed to live freely in his natural habitat. Atwood made the difficult decision to release him into the wild. He took Gore up to the mountains for their final goodbye. As Atwood started to leave, Gore followed him, just as he had done for the past six months, conflicted but resolute. Atwood tried to scare Gore into staying in the mountains by yelling and shouting causing the tiger to finally sprint into the forest. Heartbroken, Atwood returned to his village in tears, 
continuing his patrols without gore, Atwood led a quieter life until one dramatic day when he fainted on the trail. Bonnie, a villager who was nearby gathering firewood, found him and helped him recover. From that moment, a deep bond formed between them, and within weeks, Bonnie confessed her feelings. Hoping to be more than just friends, overjoyed, Atwood accepted her proposal. And they became a couple. Two years later, they married, enriching Atwood's life in ways he never imagined possible. As he approached his fifties, Atwood found peace and happiness. His days of adventures with Gore now cherished memories. As he embarked on new journeys with Bonnie by his side, Atwood experienced a sharp pain in his waist and suddenly lost consciousness. Thankfully, his daughter, Bonnie, was there to support him as she had done before. It took them a grueling three hours to reach a nearby road, where a passing car finally stopped to help them get to the hospital. Upon examination, the doctors diagnosed that Atwood's right kidney was shrinking, and his left kidney had started to become necrotic, despite staying in the hospital for several days. Atwood chose not to undergo a critical surgery due to the prohibitive costs involved. After returning home, Atwood resumed his regular duties, patrolling the mountains. Three years later, Atwood's health deteriorated further due to his kidney condition. Despite the severity, he once again refused surgery, opting instead to take more frequent rests during his patrols in the forest. The following summer brought new challenges while he was on patrol. Atwood noticed smoke signals rising from the mountain a clear indicator of forest fires which were common in that area. Understanding the imminent danger, he began to hurry down the mountain, however. His compromised health caused him to stumble and fall. At that critical moment, a tiger appeared, blocking his path with the fire rapidly advancing from behind. Prepared for the worst, Atwood was stunned when the tiger grabbed his clothes with its mouth and started dragging him to safety. In a state of shock, Atwood followed the tiger down the mountain, a burning branch fell trapping him to the ground, the tiger, despite being burned itself, stayed with him, remarkably. The tiger found a large stick and used it as a lever to free Atwood from under the branch. Confused but alive, Atwood continued to follow the tiger, which led him to safety. Once safe, the tiger affectionately rubbed against his legs, snapping him back to reality. Atwood realized he wasn't dreaming, the tiger was Gore, his old friend from years ago. Now grown and larger but still recognizable by the long scar on its leg from a previous injury. Atwood called out to see if the tiger remembered him as Gore. On hearing its name, Gore turned towards him and emitted a loud roar of recognition. After a few moments, however, Gore began to retreat back to the mountains. Atwood wished his old friend could stay a bit longer, but he understood that Gore knew its place was in the wild, outside his house. Bonnie was waiting, relieved and grateful to see her father safe. Her emotions a mix of joy and astonishment at his incredible story of survival and reunion. In an enthralling conversation, Edward shared a remarkable story with her, revealing how a tiger named Gore had saved his life. Edward recounted the touching backstory of their unique bond. Years ago, he had rescued Gore when the tiger was merely a cub. This act of kindness was not forgotten. As Gore astonishingly returned the favor by saving Edward from a potentially fatal situation, Edward expressed a deep and lasting gratitude towards Gore, strongly believing that the tiger retained a memory of him and their shared past. Truly, it was a story that defied belief. Now, turning to you, the audience, as Edward was trapped in the burning forest, what were your thoughts about his fate? Did you ever imagine that Gore would come to his rescue? I invite you to share your thoughts and reactions in the comments section below. Thank you for tuning into this incredible tale of loyalty and survival across species. Don't forget to comment, and I look forward to seeing you next time.